This video is brought to you by Adam Sharp School. Adam Sharp School hosts one of the largest catalog for iOS development videos, and it is trusted by 150 plus companies, including Apple, Comcast, JP Morgan Chase, a lot of my students work with these amazing companies and check out see these amazing reviews from some of my students. I mean, in reality, there are like 16,000 plus reviews, but you can definitely check out a few of them over here. So on Adam Sharp School, you can find a list of a lot of different courses. You can get those courses by buying individual course and you can see the list over here. I mean, this is just a crazy list because it's, it just has so many different courses available. Full stack iOS development using Swift and Vapor, MV design pattern, you know, Swift data bootcamp, testament development, create ML, reality kit, and a lot more. So definitely check out these courses. You can buy them individually or you can simply go ahead and sign up for the membership. That is what most people do. 22 comprehensive courses, over 130 hours of content, and I keep adding more videos, more tutorial, and more courses. Another thing to keep in mind are the workshops. Now, these are live workshops hosted over Zoom, and these are amazing workshops because these are very hands-on workshops. It's not like I'm going to show you some slides. We're going to dive into the code. We're going to check out the code. We're going to run it, and you will get a, get a GitHub repository with all the code, and I will be every step of the way helping you out, figure out all the problems. So our next workshop is on introduction to server side surf using Vapor. And you can see the pricing, very accessible, only $50 for a workshop. Then we have a Swift Data Fundamentals workshop, and we also have testing workshops. So definitely check out these resources on awesomesharp.school. Now let's go back to the video. Now let's go ahead and focus our attention to creating a reminder cell view. If I go to a particular list and I can see all of my reminders, which are two of them, you see, it's pretty plain. It's just displaying the text. It does not have a check mark. Um, it does not have notes and a date and a time, and all of those things are not there. So let's go and create it in a nice fashion. Instead of adding the code over here in the reminder list view, we can create a brand new view and we will call it reminder cell view. So reminder cell view. There we go. In order for the reminder cell view to work, we will have to pass in a reminder. Without a reminder, the reminder cell view will not work. You can see that the Xcode pre previews are now complaining because we need to pass in a reminder. And we currently don't really have a reminder to pass in. But what we can do is go to our preview data and try to create a single property that is going to return us the reminder, just like the my list. Now you can see that I have this property. Let's go ahead and call this persistent container dot view context. Perfect. Let's go back to our code. And now we should be able to pass in, just for the Xcode preview, we should be able to pass in the reminder. We can go ahead and call over here the preview data dot reminder. At least that is going to make reminder cell happy, hopefully. Now we can see the reminder cell view and we can work on making it look better. So let's go ahead and add an edge stack. Most of the things in the reminder cell view will be composed of the image for the checkbox. We will also have some sort of a title being displayed, the notes being displayed, and so on. So image, we will go ahead and say system name, and we'll simply say circle right now. So you can see the circle is being displayed. Now, sometime this will be completely filled, meaning it's checked. Uh, right now, we don't have the logic for that, but we can, you know, try to handle that a little bit later. Let's give it a little bit more opacity and font. Okay, looks good. 
Next up, we are going to go over that we need to create the title. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a VStack and do the alignment as leading. We'll start with displaying the title of the reminder. There we go, buy groceries. And we can also display the notes. But notes are based on a condition because sometimes the notes will be nil and sometimes the notes can be something else. So we'll display the notes if they are not nil and not empty. All right. Uh, this it may not be necessary in some cases if we can completely uh, tell the user that you are not allowed to submit the notes. So this we may be able to remove that this condition. We may be able to remove that in the future if we can make sure that we don't allow completely empty notes to go all the way to the database. So that is the important part over here. Okay. What about the reminder date and all that stuff? Well, yes, we should be able to display the reminder date and the reminder time if there is a reminder date and reminder time. That is optional things. There we go. You can see over here that we are calling the format date function and the format date function doesn't even exist. So that is a function that we can create. So let's go ahead and create a format date function. Now, since this format date is only available in the reminder cell view, that's why I'm implementing it over here. Let's go over what's going on over here. In the edge stack, we are finding out if the reminder date is not nil. Then go ahead and display the date. We are also finding out if the time is not nil, then go ahead and display the time. We have used the formatted operator in Swift UI to format the time, we don't really care about the date, and the time will be displayed in a shortened format, which means the, the hour and the minute. In the format date, we are checking if the date is today, but there is no function to check if the date is today. We don't have that particular function. And the same goes for tomorrow. So the first thing we need to do is to create a brand new folder for extensions. We're going to go ahead and add a new file, which is going to be an extension on the date. We will call it date plus extensions. And we're going to add a couple of different extensions in there. One of the extensions will be is today, which is going to find out if the date is today. We will have an extension for is tomorrow, if the date is tomorrow and the date components, which we will probably use it later on. Now let's go back. You can see that it's no longer complaining. It's not really going to display us much more. You can see it's just displaying buying groceries. And the reason is simple because we don't have any notes. We don't have a capability of adding a note. We don't have any date. We don't have any time. So when we don't have any of these things, well, it's not really going to display any of these things. But at least we are able to show the reminder cell. I cannot really check mark this. That doesn't work either. Not for now. But eventually we'll be able to do that. Let's go back to the reminder cell view. In order to perform the check mark, what we can do is add a state variable. This will be checked or not checked. And based on the checked, we are going to change the image that we're providing, the icon that we're providing. So I can say over here, if it is checked, then go ahead and use a special type of icon, which is circle.inset.filled. And if it's not checked, then you should use circle. Now let's see if I change the property over here from checked false to true, does it actually change the icon or not? If we look over here, you can see the icon is now changed and it is displaying the circle inset fill. So we can quickly test this out that it is working correctly. 
Let's go ahead and change it back to false. And now it should display just a plain old circle. Okay, looks like it's working fine. All right. The next thing that we want to do is to embed this reminder cell view in our reminder list view. The reminder list view right now is simply displaying a text view. So we can simply replace it by saying reminder cell view and passing in the reminder. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and run the app and see that if we are able to view our reminders. Now it looks much better. We can't really check anything right now, but at least it looks better. Maybe we can type a little bit more code into our reminder cell view to make it check. Let's go back to our reminder cell view and we will go to the image because that is the one that is displaying our circle and we can add an on tap gesture on it and we can simply say check dot toggle so we will check and uncheck and there we go looks like it's working per perfectly fine and it didn't really took that much code great let's go back to our home view and we can quickly test it out yeah, looks like it's working great. Okay, the next thing that we want to do, which is a big thing, is allow the user to edit a particular reminder. Right now, this reminder does not allow you to have a notes attached to it. It does not have a reminder date or a reminder time. And all of those things are very important. So we must work on creating our interfaces that will allow you to change the properties of the reminder. So we will be tackling that in the next section.